Hi, good afternoon, everyone. We are back with another great session. Uh, this time, the theme of the session is uh, decentralized security. Why would it matter in the coming future? And uh, today, we have the privilege of welcoming uh, an esteemed panel, Mr. Solvers, in the form of Mr. Jaspal Singh Shani. He is the global CI, uh, CISO uh, with Tata Communications. He is also going to be the moderator for today's session as we delve more into this theme. So I would like to welcome uh, Mr. Shawne onto the stage. Joining him uh, in the panel would be Subodh Kumar. He's director with Microsoft. Again, a seasoned professional uh, with tremendous years of experience and uh, great, um, and, and I would say great thoughts being shared by him today. Uh, joining both of them on the stage would be Gaurav Shukla. Is a partner with Deloitte India. Uh, again, a name quite prominent in the industry. So, welcome Subodh and Gaurav onto the stage. And joining all of you here is Mr. Sanjay Kumar Tiwari. He is the head IT and cyber security with IIFL and India Infoline Group. So, we have the esteemed panel on the stage. So, thank you everyone for joining us today here. And I would now like to hand it over to Mr. Jaspal Singh Shone, uh, to take the session forward. Mr. Shone, uh, over to you, and we look forward to a great session. Thanks a lot, Sukrit. Uh, am I audible? Am I, am I audible? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, great. So uh, thanks for uh, having me here. Uh, we, we're going to talk about... Uh, uh, the relevance of uh, distributed security and uh, just to set the context and uh, we have uh, quite a rich uh, uh, and, and wide uh, varied uh, panel here with, with colleagues having uh, um, uh, very rich experience from the industry from the enterprises side from the consulting but just to get the get the context i mean in the last few months we have seen as many as uh, 19 new cyber threat actors getting added to the watch list, taking the tally of the track unfamous now of 250. Uh, industry continues to observe a significant increase in interactive inclusion. Uh, Tailor-made campaigns targeting critical infrastructure, healthcare, and other federal agencies. New ransomware groups are surfacing filling up the void left by the ones which are going down uh, as promptly. And they are working on new modus operandi, actively attempting to recruit criminal partners, affiliates to attack large organizations uh, in the international locations. They are willing to pay out big monies to gain initial access uh, for providing exclusive access to enterprise networks where they could then deploy their ransomware, their malware, and exfiltrate data, which they could then cash out in the form of ransom. So the game in cyber offensive has significantly changed in the last 15 to 18 months. Um, during COVID, particularly, we have seen a stepped up offensive, both at a state nation level, as well as from a, a commercial espionage uh, standpoint. And uh, today in this group, along with all of you uh, who have made time for this session, we are going to deliberate on the relevance and the future of decentralized security and also some challenges, what it brings at the same time. Uh, so if I may start with, uh, you know, getting, asking some, some views and feedback on uh, Sanjay, maybe if I could turn it over to you and ask uh, from a large enterprise perspective, from a medium-sized enterprise perspective, what are the key cornerstones of cybersecurity in the present uh, stage in time? Yeah. Uh, thanks, Jaspal, for that. Uh, uh, probably seeing as there is a change in the dynamics over 18, 20 months uh, and the uh, uh, the cyber security has also changed. In fact, uh, organization have started realizing uh, the importance of cyber security, mainly in India. That is what uh, one of the thing is. Uh, to uh, further put this point, I'll just want to step back a little bit. What happened, uh, there were a lot of attack vectors earlier also. Uh, 
but uh, these 18 months in and this pandemic had had a lot of uh, additional attack vectors and that's not for choice that's by force because your remote working adoption of cloud that all has increased so to name few of them which has uh, come into an actually exploitation kind of thing is uh, maybe uh, the people have started adopting agile devops byod uh, mobile iot cloud saas uh cloud ias so uh, these are few of them which organizations apis uh, adoption is in a happening in a big way now what that all has done uh, uh the traditional threat vectors are there uh, uh, people and organizations have started taking care of this but this is the new addition that is happening similarly the cyber security or the information security fraternity has to step up their game also there are new uh, new ways of handling this as uh, the topic says decentralization um uh, of uh, cyber security uh, which is going to help in a very big way few of the concepts that organizations have started implementing one of them is zero trust uh, uh, it, it's 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 been uh, adopted in a very rapid manner with most of the organization even with different products then there is a sasi uh, kind of concept there was already a session on uh, zero trust and sasi uh, just prior to this uh, in one of the stages Uh, which is being adopted in a very big way, and all, along with the all the traditional methods, these are the things that has to be adopted. So every organization has to uh, increase their focus. Threat hunting and threat intelligence is not to be missed. So we have to get more proactive kind of thing, and that is where the enterprise security is moving. Uh, one good part is um, you know the management, the uh, the guys who uh, uh, never used to understand or take seriously the security that has. come a long way and probably there is a lot of improvement and uh, uh, decentralization is one of the key parts that that would help an organization going forward to achieve your cyber security in a much better way uh thanks uh, sanjay um, so a broadened threat surface and uh, a new threat vector so i think this is an ongoing challenge is what i take from what you said so both do you want to add uh, how you see things at microsoft in the last few months and uh, maybe to a year year and a half how you see things changing yeah sure just well uh, thanks for bringing me in so uh, my view is based on uh, global customer with whom we chat uh, plus as a uh, large organization spread across globe uh, what we are observing so i will put it in six parts actually i'll go fast because sanjay has very heavily talked about some of those so uh, first one itself we are seeing a growing trend and need to have integrated and uh, rapid response uh, this is the first corner stone which we are seeing a lot of organizations moving into uh, with with the uh, attack like nobelium or hafnium which has happened uh, the response that to not taking say uh, 40 days or uh, 14 days going and doing as fast as possible is becoming a critical crucial need of an organization uh, and this is also uh, the integration part we are seeing is a shift in the attack method earlier there was a smash and grab kind of attack which was happening but now attackers are coming and compromising system maintaining persistent long term presence in the organization and then slowly playing out i mean remember the entire solar wind attack uh, took a span of 5 6 months actually so how you are going to catch it and that is becoming one real need of organization which can't be solved with, without having integrated and rapid response the uh, second need which we are seeing is which is again a big corner stone is a growth in endpoints actually and endpoints is just not classic traditional laptop or uh, those devices mobile endpoints are coming in uh, iot's are coming in and uh, when those are coming in you need to have very robust identity and access management in place you need a good mobile solution and organization needs device management capability which which cuts across this hybrid topology which they are going to run with few years actually uh, which is helping them manage not only on prem but cloud also so that is another need which we are seeing uh, and there are plenty of solution sanjay talked about zero trust which is very important means to achieve it the third piece which we are seeing is around threat intel which sanjay referred but i'll just add another color to it that the the rapidity with which uh, threat actors are 
coming up is increasing and it is very well added by uh, uh, entities who are providing ransomware as a service actually so it becomes very important for enterprises organization that they have a good ferry of feeds coming to their organizations so, so that they are at the right vision the fourth one which i believe i think all of you are familiar and they talked about it is cloud native uh, support your uh, uh, remote uh, worker situation which every organization is going through in that context again zero trust uh, is becoming imp important uh, also important is saas actually which is secure access uh, and uh, uh, service uh, edge which is becoming crucial to support as you are going into cloud native the fifth one and the last piece which are rounded up which we are seeing is uh, talent actually there is a lack of talent and uh, it is of course getting stop gap with managed uh, service provider there are managed xdr service provider that's how i will enumerate those six uh, trends which we are seeing as cornerstone after talking to customers so both that's very uh, beneficial to sum it up uh, so nicely i mean I, i take incident response persistence new operating models by the threat actors sophistication and motivation of the attacks and visibility and control over shadow it as the key things of course you touched upon and and sanjay also touched upon sasi edge computing we we going to talk about those points in more detail um, in, in through the session so so thanks uh, you know for sharing your thoughts so far uh, i would like to move on and since uh, you know sasi edge computing iot ioe has been at the top of everyone's uh, um you know areas uh, to to kind of uh, uh invest in and uh, expand uh with more of edge computing more of internet of things more of internet of everything predictions being 50 billion devices by 2025 uh significant uptick in the kind of traffic and the volumes of traffic which flows from the endpoints from the edge devices into the data centers over the clouds how has this uh brought in any difference in the relevance particularly on the um, on, on the sort of uh, uh reference models like defense in depth and uh, distributed security and uh, uh how these topics have become more relevant in the context of these emerging technologies i would like to um, you know spend a few minutes on this and gorav if i may ask you to share some of your thoughts to begin with thanks uh, jaspal thank you very much for having me here and uh, uh, i think it's a nice segue to uh, what uh, sanjay and subo just spoke of uh, if you really look at it in last a few years or so there has been an enormous rise of in number of endpoints uh, interconnectivities of devices and equipment and uh, distributed computing environment so on, so so to say and what it has done is, uh, is it has increased or increased the overall threat surface uh, we look at uh, now we have smart homes we have smart cars we have connected medical devices we have industrial iot and so what is happening is with all of the iot in and around us we have been assured into the era of internet of everything from internet of things uh, and you did uh, allude to it jaspal but i'll just give a number uh, so that uh, everybody can understand the magnanimity magnanimity of this uh, in 2020 there was a report which said that uh, iot devices are in volume of about uh, 18 billion but 2025 it is to it is going to grow by 100% and expected volume is going to be about 7 37 billion I'm, and i'll be very uh, surprised if it does not go beyond that so so look at this that's the horizontal expansion which has happened uh, of the iot and connected devices around us and and it actually increases the the attack surface because all of these devices uh, are uh, processing enormous amount of data as well and they're generating enormous amount of data as well uh, some of the challenges which have uh, uh, from security perspective which have been there with regard to iot devices are uh, one there is no consistent or security standard for all of these iot devices uh, with which they can be configured with which they can be managed or operated on uh, that is one the second is uh, all these oems have a varied and different level of maturity level when it comes to 
the the configuration and all the also the operations of these iot devices sensors and so to say uh, these iot devices are subjected to uncontrolled uh, uh, unmanned and also physical tampering and theft as well uh, therefore it provides a difficulty to uh, for the security professionals uh, in terms of uh, how to employ the right level of or how to embed right level of cyber security in the iot world or in in ioe world so to say and intermittent intermittent connectivity does not uh, add any any uh, uh, i would say uh, ease either now with regard to edge computing which again a prediction is that it is going to be a 9 billion uh, 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 industry by 2024 globally uh, what does it mean that it means that local computing power uh, at the near data source is going to minimize the response time and latency it will increase the need for decentralization because such is the architecture such is the uh, nature of the edge computing but it will also give rise to decentralized security for reducing the chances of single point of failure and which is where the focus for cyber security professionals would be and the rise of edge computing also creates a, a plethora of local computing environment data storage and this also like iot expansion it also expands the threat surface greatly uh, edge, edge computing also significantly enlarges the uh, uh the attack service and the combination of uh, data center and cloud computing security is something that uh, also needs to be seen in the context of edge computing now let me just touch upon defense in depth that you also talked about uh, just and i would love i would say that uh, uh, we have to move uh, move from defense in depth to defense in depth and breadth both because such has been the explosion of the edge computing and all the uh, the connected devices around us. And when we look at uh, defense in depth uh, conceptually, uh, it is basically providing layer by layer security and with, with a thought process that at least one of the layer will be able to combat the uh, 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 attacker or perpetrator uh, and will keep the bad actors uh, away from exploiting the system and stealing the data, etc. Now, what edge computing does is edge computing because the nature is the distributed networking, a computing node storage and safety control system is kind of inbuilt to it. And the DDN strategy, which is uh, adopted typically uh, in the edge computing, uh, does offer a level of uh, security zone, compartmentalization, and uh, different, different defensive elements in each of each zone. Uh, what we, we at Deloitte, we had done a study and we came up with a paper uh, where, which says that how an enterprise can have a journey from defense in depth to zero trust access model. And which is where, which is where uh, in the decentralized uh, security architecture, uh, identity and access management and blockchain because, you know, play a very, very critical role. Uh, if you really look at this uh, uh, identity and access management environment is no longer restricted to human identity with the plethora of these uh, uh, iot devices and the other digital devices it has gone beyond uh, the human identity and digital identity is also there so therefore uh, IT and access management if employed in the decentralized manner uh, would offer a level of security from the access and authorization perspective uh, the other one is uh, uh, all of these iot and edge computing devices uh, would uh, employ cloud computing as the basic means as a platform so cloud computing uh with a, which is running on the blockchain based decentralized security ar architecture can further provide the decentralized security that we are we are uh, talking about or that we are looking to adopt in the future uh, what happens in this there are three core pillars of the technology that are going to be employed in the uh, decentralized blockchain uh, security one is sdn which is software uh, defined network and SDN here is going to be liable for uh, a continuous monitoring for the entire IT and edge computing environment in order to, prov to provide optimal level of uh, attack detection models and uh, keep uh, the attackers at bay and then identify them quickly due to continuous monitoring ability. Second is blockchain. Blockchain uh, by itself is a decentralized uh, uh, technology or technique. So what is going to happen is uh, the attack detection and mitigation is going to happen from the single point of failure per, uh, perspective. And that is the inherent uh, ability of blockchain that must be employed when we are talking about decentralized security. The third one is going to be fog and mobile edge computing. 
Now, fog and mobile edge computing actually supports attack detection at the fog and the node level. So in case there is an attack, the node can be insulated from the network and rest of the uh, nodes and rest of the networks or devices can continue to operate with lesser storage constraint, cheaper computation, and also low laten latency with an embedded cybersecurity to it. So, so there was not a, not a, not a, I would say the short answer, but it was a, a quite pervasive. But I just wanted to blend IoT edge computing in with blockchain and uh, decentralized identity and access management. Uh, so that, God that of, uh, thank you. Gaurav, thanks a lot. These are all very, very uh, relevant points. And uh, the key things I take away from what you just shared is while the defense in depth stays important, is the breadth, which is what we need to also focus on. A significantly broadened threat surface, more mission critical transactions happening outside of enterprise networks on distributed networks, life critical usage of technology, whether it is assisted surgeries or monitoring health for senior citizens in smart cities. Uh, the stakes are significantly higher. Absolutely. And uh, all of this has crossed the confines of enterprise data centers. Uh, so yes, we need to be worried. We need to watch out how to have the right level of visibility control um, on, on all of this uh, uh, while continuing to um, you know, enable uh, what this innovation really brings. Uh, with Absolutely. that, let's. Uh, and just while you made a very, very good point there, uh, security is important, but I think this also provides a concern of safety as well. Yeah, so medical Absolutely. devices, connected cars, etc. So their safety becomes even more important than security there. So, so it needs uh, to be to be considered as well. Yeah. Thanks, Gaurav. So, uh, leading on further in the discussion, um, no conversation in the present times would be complete without touching on. Uh, the favorite buzzwords of zero trust and sassy. I think all of us, uh, you know, depending what role we do, whether it's uh, security for the enterprise or security solutions for our customers, or even the reference uh, frameworks, um, zero trust and sassy are here to stay. They have always been here in some way. It's not like an entirely new topic, uh, but contextualize access control um, dynamic security policies, how all of this brings in further relevance in the topic what we are discussing, which is distributed security. I would like to spend a few minutes uh, between us uh, uh, talking on that. So both if uh, I may uh, request you to share your views on this uh, from what you see at Microsoft. Sure, Jaswal, thank you. Uh, I think this is a very pertinent question. Uh, I mean, previous question and the responses, comments by previous speaker has indicated zero trust is top of mind. Uh, but let me set it in the uh, specific context first, zero trust, then SaaS, and then talk about decentralized security. So uh, zero trust primarily implies three things, actually, in a very oversimplified way. Uh, you have to be very explicit uh, whom you are giving access use least privilege access and then assume breach. And this aligns with this framework definition and this is what at Microsoft we believe in, uh, in, in delivering. If you look at SaaS, world is moving over to cloud native. That thing is getting accelerated. Now companies have invested a lot in on-prem uh, stack. They have their DLP running in stack, their firewall running in stack. And when they are moving over cloud, go cloud native, the transit is where SaaS fits as a method, actually. So SaaS is nothing but a method to achieve zero trust when an organization is moving to cloud. And there are multiple technology which makes it complicated when you plan. You will have DLPs, CASBs, firewalls, secure web gateway, US, uh, the user analytics which you build or develop, VPN stack, which you invested in, all those things creates complexity for planning that journey itself. But when you bring both these together in context of decentralized security, there are a few trends which started in the last few years, actually. We have seen large scale attacks like Novilium, Hafnium, which I referred in the first question itself, where the sophistication has increased. And if you consider those kind of attacks with the remote work situation, 
then zero trust is becoming critical for safeguarding our interest and as organizations are moving over cloud to support the remote working scenario situation saas is becoming critical so that is where those two elements are crucial in this conversation and the key exploit entity in this entire thing is digital identity access permissions in form of token certificate for within organization is protect, protected with zero trust and with saas when you are moving or going through this hybrid topology but the one area which is not protected is the collab with consumer and partners and that's where we are seeing supply chain attacks happening i mean a vendor who has some token was using github and that token was exploited by attacker to get into the organization right how are we ensuring security in that scenario how are we ensuring privacy in that scenario and that's where uh, a new notion of decentralized identity system evolved in last couple of years at microsoft we did some work we have done uh, partnering with uh, organizations like uh, digital identity framework which is a open uh, organization we are partnering with w3c identity uh, committee we are partnering with many other organizations which are working in this identity specific area itself a uh, standard based decentralized identity then unlocks experience where it empowers user and organization to control who has access of what nature actually and what it does is it creates trust uh, overall trust in the system uh, in in long term and it gives user a right to give consent when somebody is trying to access his or her detail actually and it makes it harder for attacker to exploit because uh, without having user consent you won't be able to access uh, the identity so if i have to just summarize it uh, saas zero trust is a investment which organizations are already doing it the remote happening decentralized security is becoming a trendy thing that's where decentralized uh, identity is a new uh, investment which is happening and a lot of organizations are investing in it so both thanks uh, very nicely summarize uh, this uh, topic and and it's very very relevant and uh, the key points i take from what you shared with us is uh, more cloud native faster adaption of on prem managed and hybrid cloud tenancies this when combined with remote work scenarios which is here to stay all of us by now know that there is not going to be anything like the real returning to normal in the near future uh, the need to present users and partners thus with dynamic and contextual security challenge and like you said you know the digital identity and hence the need for a holistic digital trust i think will continue to then drive newer cyber security paradigms which we are discussing here right now uh, thanks to both uh, i'm moving on to the next topic which keeps uh, all of us in cyber security also awake and concerned and very very busy and that's the area of uh, software security as we have seen there is a Uh, a sort of an emerging trend on more and more exploits happening on the software supply chain um, more of devsecops more containers more of api and connected software supply chain so let's spend a few minutes talking about what this means from a distributed security standpoint um, where do we need to focus and what challenges does this bring uh, so sanjay i'm going to turn this over to you uh what's your your thoughts thank you for that actually uh, that's very interesting uh, to means uh, any conversation without um, software security is uh, means does not make sense because today whatever happens so if you see most of the attacks generally happening through uh, your applications web applications mobile applications or an api kind of thing and that is where the whole uh, whole focus comes around uh dave secops has been uh, seen so many years uh, people have been speaking around but actually in a true sense people have started implementing uh, dave secops uh, in a true sense and people have started uh, uh, putting lot of efforts around uh, dave secops now uh, 
um, two three parts to it one i'll uh, first is the dev sec ops if you say people have started taking a lot of saas as a service as so uh, spoke of our github uh, there is a gitlab bit okay so people have started using saas and creating a ci cd pipeline uh, these uh, these partners or these service providers who have a very uh, very enhanced security building within their uh, pipeline so that organizations do not have to uh, focus much on that uh, because everything uh, comes out uh, uh, post fixing the bugs and everything probably there would be something residual kind of thing that ha- that organization has to take care of uh, that is one of the part that is happening so it's not um, uh, the, uh, the second risk with it comes is the vendor risk of it so if your code lies at these parts how do you take care of that the token leakage or a code leakage or probably if your code gets committed into a public that is one of the aspects that needs to be taken care uh, people have started adopting containers dockers kind of thing which is a secondary part second part again it's a kind of it's on a cloud that people have started adopting uh, and the multi cloud is one of them so if you say in a, a true sense it may not be a decentralized but if you have your workloads distributed to different different uh, maybe uh, verticals or different cloud providers obviously it, it reduces your risk uh the third and the most important part is api so uh, i i i i go through a lot of uh, hacker community probably if you see the most of the attacks uh for me as an endpoint as an hacker is an api endpoint so public uh, or these hackers are very smart and they look after these endpoints of an api now what organizations do api is very easiest way to um uh, integrate your front end back end and they publish it they forget the old apis and that is where the whole challenge comes out now how do you take care of these api and that is one of the key aspects where you bring in decentralization kind of thing if you have a saas where you have a ci cd pipeline you have the inventory you have the accountability of these apis where you can discard your old apis you can uh, ensure your old apis are not uh, throwing out any data kind of thing so these are the key aspects of software security which needs to be taken in this new environment although um, uh, and that is where the hackers generally or probably these bad guys are focusing today yeah i just want to speak you're not you're not audible i'm sorry i was speaking to you thank you jay for uh, sharing quite a bit of uh, Uh, information there and i would uh, hash out a few things but before i do that gorav i would also like to ask you to share in your discussions with um, um, the customers and the large enterprises how how do you see uh, they viewing the relevance of uh, some of these topics and what measures the industry at large is taking around this me yeah, I, i think uh, uh, sanjay has covered uh, a lot of things quite in detail but uh, uh, imagine that uh, these days about 90% of internet traffic is driven by the apis which is which in a way, way is is a critical pillar of devsecops right and and all the application development deployment whatever is happening is you know apis are uh, you know driving all those de- development and deployment so it is it is absolutely absolutely a uh, business imperative to make sure that uh, security by design privacy by design and ongoing uh, penetration testing uh, is is integrated uh, when apis are being used right from the api gateway all the way to their development uh, to their deployment and their uh, ongoing uh, monitoring uh, in the regular production environment also one of the things that we found that typically gets missed out even even when the apis are being used in abundance is non prod environment right so api security in the non prod environment is also very important from both the security cyber security perspective but also data privacy perspective because quite a few times uh, uh, the data is without masking is is put in in uh, the non prod environment and is used for testing and these apis process and store and then nobody really takes care of it uh, uh, so 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 i think therefore it becomes very very important to make sure that api security which is top of the application layer uh, application uh, you know development and uh, deployment is taken well care of and actually if you look at ovasp or api ovasp uh, you know this this is one of the top risk that they also highlight 
as well. Uh, one of the things that I also wanted to highlight that I think community at large is, is recognizing that there indeed much more effort which is required uh, when it comes to secure adoption uh, of these APIs and which is where this uh, API 3 effort which is there, it's a collaborative effort uh, to build and manage and monetize the decentralized APIs. So for because its nature is that it is going to be used for decentralized development and in the decentralized environment, there's a DAPI uh, uh, kind of uh, effort, which is called as API3, which has been put in place. And I'm hoping that as we mature further, this effort like OVASP, which has started giving us a lot of guidance in terms of how we integrate security uh, into the applications on, uh, in particularly in, in API also will start happening much more. Uh, um, not just security, but also privacy. So, so that's the additional to what uh, Sanjay had mentioned just now. Thanks, uh, Gaurav. Sanjay, very, very good points. And, uh, you know, as I see this, attacks on source code repositories, Kubernetes, Dockers, and APIs, they not just impact the availability of business operations, but they also many a times breach the competitive advantage what the firm has in the form of the processes which are running behind these technical components. Of course, they also compromise the trust, what your partners and your customers have. So protecting them by having robust security processes around software, I think is absolutely vital. And again, signifies and underscores the need to have a separate focus within the software communities, create more dialogue, more participation, more engagement in these areas. Uh, we're coming to the close of the session, but uh, I would like to just uh, cover one more last topic, which I think is uh, very relevant for all of us, whether we are in the supplier space or we are protecting the enterprises in the CISO roles. Uh, so finally, what does this mean uh, from the point of view of security budgets, availability of cyber skills? Because in the end, we know all what's um, you know, really, really significant and, and important in this whole game is uh, people, people, and people, right? So if I may ask Sanjay, as, as your role as a leader for IT and security practice for your organization, um, and, and uh, Gaurav, again, you or Subodh, if you want to chime in, if you guys can touch on um, the budgets and the availability of skills and some of these related topics. That will nicely wrap up the discussion. Yeah, yeah. So I'll, I'll quickly uh, give, give my views. Probably a budget is one of the key areas for any CISO or probably any cybersecurity practitioner, at least for an organization like us or any native organization <clears throat> or any, any guy working in, for a native organization kind of thing where we want to implement. So whatever, uh, obviously, the budget part has increased, uh, seeing all these changes in the environment over the last 20, uh, two years, uh, attacks have increased, a lot of traffic has increased on your perimeter where you see a lot of uh, a lot of attempts happening uh, uh, that has increased. But, uh, but still, the problem stays as in whatever you need, you have to justify things and you have to show what is the impact that brings you if you don't have that, those kind of things. Uh, uh, it is there, but it is not there kind of a thing. Uh, probably organization have started investing. So if I go for an advanced kind of an control, probably a SOC kind of an advanced SOC kind of, a, or you could say next generation SOC, threat hunting or a dedicated resource for threat hunting, maybe a couple of them, probably why do we need a couple of them? You have to always justify them. I, I'm sure all India organizations most of them, not all, most of them would be facing this issue on the budget side. Uh, but uh, uh, to appreciate part of it, appreciative part is uh, obviously it has increased uh, and uh, management is understanding that, uh, that side and a lot of, lot of implementation and improvement is happening. Skill shortage is one of the biggest problem that we have, in fact, um, uh, that most of the community is facing. Uh, what we have done mostly is uh, uh, earlier also there was a skill shortage with the, the native technologies which were there, but uh, uh, post change in the technology, the adoption of new things, uh, this has further uh, uh, caused a lot of issues. In fact, uh, along with that, there is a lot of attrition around that would be happening in organization and you cannot acquire uh, new skills. 
So what we have uh, on generally organizations are doing, or probably we are doing is we are adding a lot of trainings, uh, knowledge sharing, internal guy, uh, training the internal guy, or maybe external training kind of thing. But the shortage is there. Um, you know, organization, it's, it's getting pretty difficult for CISOs and cybersecurity heads to uh, handle. Uh, it's, it's pretty hot and market is also quite hot. So each, uh, I have seen candidates having two, three, four, five offers and say, I need to choose and uh, see where I go. So that is kind of thing. Uh, the shortage of skill is there in the market. Very good point, Sanjay. I'll, I'll just, uh, you know, put a pause here and I just wanted to take, if time permits, to create one question out of the list uh, because that's kind of the crux of the whole discussion. And uh, uh, he's been asked that, can you explain concept of decentralized security in a layman language? I mean, I can ask my uh, fellow colleagues to uh, opine on it, but if I may make a start very quickly, uh, as a CISO of one of the large uh, critical infrastructure institutions, I firmly believe uh, we always say security is a shared responsibility. But if there has been any time where this has become more relevant than ever before, then today is that time. And just by investing into security budgets within the information security organization or by investing into skills and certifications into this central team, we can only that far in we can only go this far in our journey and adaption and protecting the enterprise i think we need to be absolutely careful in ensuring that we have enough and and, and ample sort of an uptake of all security topics within various technology outfits the businesses should understand the uh, impact of cyber risk on their revenues there has to be the right sort of allocation of budgets uh, from a risk management perspective, cyber and the business continuity scenarios should enact some of the cyber disruptions. So this is really a full 360 degree view of cyber in an enterprise. And uh, with all the all what we have spoken in the session earlier, I think this can only uh, further uh, underscore the need for this. If anybody wants to add something quickly, you know, um, I invite yeah. you. I'm, I'm conscious that we have run out of time. so. Yeah, just part, just, part just, the rest of the questions. Yeah, just just extension to what you said. Uh, so quite frankly, in a layman's um, the way I I envisage the, the the decentralized security is CISO and uh, his or her team are there at the center. They can do only this much. But then each line of this lines of business, each departments, each function within the organization have to embed cyber security, privacy, and cyber resilience into their daily ways of working as well. How do you do that? CISO and team can enable it, but ultimately they have to own it. They have to do it because because finally, when an attack happens, it impacts them the most. And the moment we start identifying that this is our risk, which we have to own, we have to manage, that, that is when we will achieve this decentralized security by having at least one security point of contact who is managing and, and uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, advocating cyber security privacy in the various lines of business and also with the departments and that will also create a culture of cyber security awareness and it will provide more people perhaps so the skill shortage that sanjay earlier talked about we might see that people get cross skilled people may get upskilled within the same organization start contributing to much more in the cyber security agenda uh, got a very nicely summarized, very uh, valid points. Uh, uh, Sukrit, I would like to, at this point, hand it over back to you. I know we are slightly over time, but uh, such was the topic and uh, uh, the varied sort of uh, and very rich thoughts what all the panelists shared. Uh, I enjoyed this discussion, and maybe we can take some of the questions in the Q&A panel offline uh, in some way if, if the platform permits that. Uh, over to you, Sukrit uh, and Team DSCI. And thanks, everyone, all my colleagues, for being here. Thanks, Thank you, Sukrit, for Thank having you, me. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. Do we discuss? Are we still on? Yeah, yeah. it looks like. So, Sanjay. I don't know. I can speak now or not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. But by the way, Sanjay, the topic that you mentioned, attrition, skill shortage. I think all of us here can discuss it day long and night long. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs>
Yes, so Rupi, I see you <laughs> taking over. <laughs> thank, you. thank you so much for this lovely session. And uh, now I would request the next session owner to kindly join us and take the uh, initiative forward. So thank you everyone in the panel uh, for sharing your thoughts with the live audience. Thank you. And uh, we look forward thank to more support in the future. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Likewise. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you.